Hey, this is Lula, and this is the series where we look at the most expensive house for sale in each state. We are in Louisiana today, and I am particularly excited to see how the wealthy live because uh, I've, I've been to uh, to Louisiana a few times, and from what I understand, the, the aristocracy here, more than any other place in the U.S., which, which is saying something, really wishes that slavery was still around. That's the vibe of the wealthy in Louisiana. They are just yearning for the yesteryear when they could really oppress people uh, without having to arrest them first, uh, which is how they've gotten around it. Anyway, we are in Baton Rouge. If you're surprised that we're not in New Orleans, uh, I, I should let you in on a little information, which is that New Orleans is going to be under the sea uh, very soon. So I, I assume people are, are investing their money more so in, in the upland areas. Uh, this looks, uh, we, we've seen similar styles to this. This kind of reminds me of the style we saw, I think it was in, in Alabama, this kind of faux Italian villa sort of style. Um, the, the kajillion steps up to the front entryway is, is an interesting thing. It, it looks like this is some sort of public building that, you, you know, like a library or something you're supposed to walk up to. All right, this is a massive compound though. You can see this is the circle drive. You're supposed to walk all the way. This is very hostile to guests and especially hostile to any guest uh, that's not good with stairs, which is, which is how we know that they're not only hostile to the poor, but they are also hostile to the disabled, which, you know, thankfully for them is usually the same thing. All right, let's, let's take a look inside. We've got, this is, okay, I'm getting more Spanish mission than villa here with with the courtyards and, and these breezeways here. That's the vibe I'm getting. We've got a little fountain. Oh, we got two fountains on either side here. All right, you need that in your, in your Spanish mission courtyard. All right. We got a large lake on the property or pond. I'm not sure what the line is between those two. We got, oh, we got a gate to keep the riffraff out. You got to make sure that the pores don't get in. And we got a security hut too. Uh, so you can get some, some black water washouts to, to make sure that the riffraff does not get in. Uh, we got a big ass pool. Oh boy. That's a gigantic pool. We've got this nice courtyard. Yeah, I'm assuming the house kind of wraps around this. That is that style. It looks like we've got a rounded window here um, in this in this kind of pavilion space. Some it, really interesting and unique architectural details here. I guess not that unique, but but interesting at least. Uh, this I th think these might be chimney tops here. Um, cool. Got another, oh, that's, I think that might be the, no, this is a different fountain. A lot of fountains on the property. Uh, thankfully there's no shortage of water in Louisiana. Uh, that water may very well just be bubbling up from the, the water table, which is about five inches below this grass. All right, we're inside and we are starting out in this very far, I think this is an office. We got a desk here. And then we got a sitting area here. Uh, this is this is where you discuss for how much can you buy slave prison labor. That's what the discussion is going on there. Uh, all very very stark. It's it's not monochrome. You know they've they've gone with uh, some different color schemes. They've got the the wood here, but it it does have a sort of a sharpness and cleanness to it that is. Um, you know, it makes you really want to straighten your posture up sort of thing. Uh, here's the other angle on the, oh, wow, that is an intimidating hallway. Uh, I see we've got a, a ton of bookshelves with no books on them. Uh, we've burned all of the books uh, for safety. The, the books were, were, you know, promoting subversive thinking. Instead, we've put these fish on the shelves and a single knickknack per shelf. And we've got, of course, 
a TV for looking at the stonks. And we've got a very, very white space out here. My God. And talk about a jarring transition from Kentucky where we had a, a painting on every spare piece of wall. We've got nothing on the walls here. It is it is bare as can be. We've got identical white furniture back to back. Uh, it, it, it's giving hotel lobby vibes. Like, is this a counter there? That, that, it literally looks like we're in a hotel lobby and that could be like the counter to get service. Um, you've got, obviously got a grand foyer here. I see the foyer table. There's chairs around the foyer table, which tells me that they misunderstand the purpose of the foyer table, which is that there's, there's not supposed to be any functionality to it. That's the purpose. Oh, yep, there it is. Yeah, that's, and, and we've got a chandelier over it, so they've got the, the foyer table with shit upon it and the chandelier, and they've just misunderstood that this is here for absolutely no reason except as a, a centerpiece of this. we got the double staircase wrapping up here. we got the metal grates on the door, just in case your black water washouts uh, didn't stop the hordes from coming up your long stair covered walkway with their guillotine. It's it's hard to roll a guillotine upstairs. I will say that. Uh, they've, they've thought that through. We've got some neoclassical columns here to, to really emphasize that this is white Western culture uh, and all, all that that entails. A very white hallway with some gold gilting. Everything about this is is just aggressively oligarchical to me. That's yeah, I think that's that's the word I would choose. So rich people love symmetry. They can't buy just one of a piece of furniture. So we've got two of these chairs, two of these chairs, and then of course the the couch is is symmetrical to itself. But all of their symmetrical furniture is off center from the fireplace. So they've completely you know, pick, pick one or the other. Either have everything be symmetrical or have it not be symmetrical. You can't be symmetrical and off-center. Uh, uh, the couch is still symmetrical. It's symmetrical with the second seating area. Uh, we've got the classic uh, too much floor space and, and not enough to do with it. So we've got two adjacent sitting areas. Uh, and then we've even got this, this third little bench over here. Um... I want to see this painting here because it looks like it's not even hung on the wall. It's just sitting on a counter. All right, here's the kitchen. Is this a kitchen? This, I mean, it, it's got all of the, the appearance of a kitchen, but I don't see anything to cook with uh, here. I don't even see a sink. So this is more like a bar, maybe. Um, we've got the dining room over here. Everything is very open with these vaulted ceilings, so everything echoes through the entire space. Maybe that's why they don't have any cooking things in here, because you'd hear it everywhere. Uh, we've got a big-ass fireplace. No color. Like, this this brown is the only color in the space, and everything else is just stark, stark white. It's not even giving Pottery Barn vibes. It's, it's too hostile for Pottery Barn, and that is saying something. We got a a TV here that doesn't really, it's, it's too off center from the rest of the room. I don't know that you'd even be able to see it properly from there. Um, I do see some other details on the kitchen here. I'm just not sure how that lines up with that space we saw before. Yeah, look at that. They, so they've avoided the TV over the fireplace, but the entire room is oriented around the fireplace. And the TV is like off in this weird corner facing nothing. You have to stand up to watch the TV. I think that's the idea. The TV is to be watched while standing. Here's more of the kitchen. And I'm not sure that that other area was a kitchen at all. That might have just been like a serving prep area. Uh, but we do have the double island that we've discussed previously, where this is the, the kitchen island, which has the sink in it and uh, this little dip for I'm not sure what. And then the space was still too big uh, with the kitchen island. So they've added a sandbar out here because the island was just lost in the sea of the kitchen. There are so, so many cabinets in here. My God, what are you putting all of those? 
right. This, so the island cabinetry doesn't match the rest of it, which I'm not necessarily against, except everything is just so white that adding like beige as a counter color to it doesn't really do anything for the space. Um, you just look mismatched, but you've added no depth or balance to anything. Um, I, everything, the entire focal point of this whole living space has become this picture over here because it's the only thing with any color in the entire space. There's some interesting patterns going on up here in the ceiling, but they are indented with can lights that are a little tacky. Um, and, oh, we've got a... A refrigerator disguised as a cabinet and very well disguised. Look at that. They've built cabinetry around it uh, because the rich can't let you know that they eat. You can't let them know you eat uh, because if you eat, that implies you can starve, which implies you can die. Uh, so you got to hide that shit away. Uh, we've got a second sink over here, just miles away from everything else. Actually, I was going to look at the ergonomics of this i think these are both refrigerators actually and they're just awkwardly far away from the stove and the sink that's that's just so far to walk um you could tell that these people they're, they're not really cooking for themselves otherwise they would have designed this better and we've got a thousand chairs at the sandbar of course it's just so bleak. I need a dark mode for this house. I'm going blind. These columns are so intimidating in here in the marble space with these high ceilings. It's, I mean, it's like being in, in a museum or something. Up oh, here we've got the, the wine storage uh, with very little wine in it. It's like they've either already cleared out and moved it somewhere else, but they left these few bottles in here just, just so you know what this room is for, in case you weren't sure. Or they're not wine drinkers. They're, they're Tito Tallers, um, and they only have the wine in here because they, they feel socially pressured to have wine in here. Uh, this room, oh, this is the room with the, uh, the curved glass on it, or this might actually be below the one that we saw, but... Uh, this this is that same uh, curved glass is very expensive uh, from what I understand so that's I mean that's a very bougie detail to have uh, normally what you would have is you know just a window and then partitions as it as it rotates in, in kind of an octagonal uh, pattern uh, we've got <laughs> Maybe it's a camera angle. It's probably a camera angle. This this table looks a little small for the room. Uh, we've got, oh, you know, two tiny little spittles of color in the space. Uh, and otherwise, can you, can you imagine, the, I mean, the white curtains, once the white curtains are drawn on this white room and everything in here is just white, um, you, you would feel like you were on a spaceship. Another white room, another white dining room. This is uh, the formal white dining room. And uh, it's, it's just, you can't even see, again, white curtains. You wouldn't even be able to see once you draw those. And uh, again, oh, we've got, we've got a colored light fixture here. Hallelujah. Look at that. The, this is like an oasis of color in this bleak, bleak white room. God, this house is just... Depressing. This oh, <laughs> we've got the Ten Commandments in this entryway. I feel threatened. I feel like I'm gonna be hate crimed right now. Um, this is this is how you really let the minorities know they're not welcome on this property. Oh, we've got another little pavilion thing here. We've got a massage room here, and you know all all I can really wonder is uh, you know. Are, are they using prison labor for the massage? Or, or would they not deign to be touched by a minority? And, and therefore they are paying top dollar for the white masseuse uh, in this white room. Otherwise, that poor person has to feel so, so intimidated in this house. You know, if I were uh, a 
professional masseuse and therefore a part of the working class that works with my hands for a living and I had a one percenter on this table vulnerable and naked it would be darn hard for me to not do something in that situation I'm just gonna say whoever works in here has has the restraint of of a much stronger person than me All right here's that sitting room from above just oh this is this is that space that we did see so this is directly above that little dining room with the curved glass and uh it's a room with too much floor space so you've got a little conference table over here and a sitting room area over here in front of this tv uh i believe you're supposed to have curtains that automatically close on here that's what all this wiring is for but i don't see them up here um uh, same thing here. It's it's like they've taken down the curtains, um, but they've got them wired up for, for curtains. This is another sitting room. I don't really know what's going on over here. That's um, confusing to me. But we've got... This, this is a strange little area here. Like, this is just a regular sitting area. Here we've got some, like, easy chairs. I think that might be a couch around a table. I don't know what that's about. Oh, here's the in-home movie theater. And they've, you know, made the brilliant decision of making the entire movie theater their favorite color, white, uh, so that it's impossible to make this room dark enough to watch a movie. Uh, every time the screen flashes, the entire room is going to just light up like a Christmas tree. Um, and, and yet they felt the need to put lighted strips on these stairs here as if you couldn't see this entire room glow in the dark through the entire movie. Here's that intimidating hallway again. And we've got an indoor-outdoor space. All right. Uh, we've got this very bougie, um, bougie, that's not even a grill. I guess it's technically a grill, but it looks more like a stove. We've got a dishwasher outside. Um, got some stairs down, some, some good sitting space, some good dining space. This, you know what, this is a very functional uh, outdoor patio space. I, I think that this is a space that's more likely to be used than some of the, the outdoor spaces we've seen. And that leads through, so that's the kitchen back there because this is the single colorful piece of art here. So then that's a sitting area there. And then this, oh, this is the curved window into that weird dining room. And all of this looks out onto the pool, of course. Uh, there is that sitting room with the single colorful piece of art. What are these little boxes for? They're, they're just empty glass boxes. I think there's supposed to be plants in there. But I assume that these people are just so toxic and vile in their souls that every living thing they touch just shrivels and dies. And that's why there's not a single plant in this entire house. It's a very white room. God, they couldn't have even gotten a carpet. You know, we, we've seen some bleak rooms that had like a little bit of color in the oriental rug. But they've picked a fully gray shade rug that's depressing we got we've got a little bit of color in the form of these pillows um which is just it, it just highlights how colorless the rest of the room is at this point um Oh, instead, you know what? I think this is actually a billiards table. In fact, yeah, with these pockets, you could tell this is a billiards table. If your house, if your mansion doesn't have a billiards table, are you really rich? And then they put a ping pong table over the top because they only got the billiards table because they felt socially pressured to do so. But actually what they wanted to play was ping pong. So they've just set the ping pong atop the billiards. Right, we've got a second grand staircase. This is not the, the main grand staircase of this house, but we've got a second foyer table with chandelier, but they don't have any shit to put on it. You know that little vase and that weird inset? Just put that on the table. That needs to be there. Got a little veranda. 
And here's the thing from above. What a monstrosity. This is, I think this is probably on par with the Los Angeles house in terms of soullessness and senseless, tasteless op opulence, where it's it's just all money, no taste, uh, no no sense of personality, no sense of soul. Um, I can't imagine anyone living there and not just being the most ruthless, miserable person you ever met in your life. I mean, who wants to live like this? Who actually wants to live like this and is not just a shriveled, cruel human being? Oh my God. This is, yep, yeah, you know what? This is less than 10% the cost of the Los Angeles house, but every bit as, as horrific. So, I mean, that just tells you, this is basically a, a model for the exchange rate between Louisiana and California because you know what in California you are forced to to pay a little bit better wages to to your slave labor and and so they can get away with it a lot cheaper here in Louisiana which is why they can get the same soulless one percenter mansion for a fraction of the price uh, congratulations guys this is this is exactly what I expect from the Louisiana aristocracy. It is such a holdover of, of the antebellum era. It is, you know, a, a lot of the, the original colonizers that came into, into like the mid-Atlantic and, and the, the French Arcadian uh, er, areas, they were like, like the second sons of aristocracy who be, because of primogeniture in, in England and in France, they, they weren't going to inherit anything uh, from from their parents because they, you know, they were the second son. And, and so they came over to the, the new world to, to make a, a new, better system. And they just created the same aristocratic system without primogeniture. They're like they, they thought that was the only the only problem with the system. They were like, the only problem with the system is that I personally am not going to receive this exorbitant wealth. Um, and, and you could just see, you could draw a straight line from that mentality to this sort of, this sort of wealth where it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's this soul sucking, vampiric, parasitic sort of aristocracy. Oh, guillotine, guillotine for a thousand years. Um, if, if you've got any uh, uh, righteous indignation to get out of your system, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, if, if you want to have some some more uh, aggressive righteous indignation, you might want to wander over to Tumblr where they're a little more open-minded to that sort of thing. I am I am Lula Pants on Tumblr, L-U-U-L-A-P-A-N-T-S. Uh, other than that, you can like, subscribe, and have a good one.